this video I'm going to show you how pickup forecasting works. This is a very simple approach to forecasting, but it will give you a bit of an idea about how systems go about doing it. After the video has finished, we will then start to talk about how we can use the forecast to apply availability controls. Okay, so it's the, hard, the hardest topic of the day. So, so far it's been kind of light-hearted, we've been doing straightforward easy exercises, two-room hotel, etc. Now we really need to think about, okay, how, how do we do this demand forecast? And I'm going to talk to you about a manual way we can do it, but in reality I would never recommend you to do a, forecast, a demand forecast manually unless you had no choice. I think it, it would be very, the time it would take us to do a manual forecast, if we were to calculate the price of that time, um, it would be a lot more expensive than actually installing a revenue management system. Okay, because as humans, we take a lot longer to do everything, and it's going to be less good than if the system does it for us. Okay? <coughs> so there's very clear return on investment on using a revenue management system. But, why, so what's the point of me talking about doing a manual approach? Because the point is this. You are going to be interacting with a revenue management system. You need to be comfortable with the recommendations that the revenue management system is making. So you need to have an understanding of well, how, where do these recommendations come from? Otherwise, you'll never feel confident with the system. <coughs> and I always compare um, the kind of understanding that I would like you to have that's useful for you to the way we drive our car. When I drive a car, I kind of listen to the engine and it tells me when I need to change gear. I'm looking at the dials, knowing when I have to put petrol in, and knowing how I can be a good driver of the car. To be a good driver of my car, I don't need to understand how the engine works. I absolutely don't. Okay? I just need to have some understanding of my car, what my car needs, and what my car might be telling me. Okay? And it's the same thing for when we're operating, when we're interacting with the revenue management system. We don't really need to know how the mathematics goes on inside the system, but we do kind of have to have a feeling about you know, where did those results come from. Right? So we're, we're looking at this in the perspective that we're doing a manual approach to, to forecasting. So we understand what the demand forecast is, how it works, and how it can be used. And what the system might be recommending, and why the system is making those recommendations. Okay? So first of all, we're going to do manual forecasting using Excel and spreadsheets and a few weeks of historical data. And then we're going to look at a system, a revenue management system report, and have a look at, okay, what is it telling us, and do we understand where those numbers come from, and thirdly, do we understand how powerful this revenue management system is, right? So, the forecast, of course, we want it to be accurate. Remember, it's not talking about meeting our budget, it's about the demand forecast, so being 80% accurate is already really good especially in times where things are very uncertain. And I'm going to talk to you about different types of uncertainty as well. Um, and black swans. Has anyone heard of a black swan? Black swan. Uh, so we're going to talk about black swans and coconuts. A beautiful book. So we know the film, The Black Swan, which is a good film. But what I'm talking about has nothing to do with that film. It's, it's a book that's written by Nicholas Taleb. Um, and there's also some things on YouTube from him. And the Black Swan is really an event that is very difficult to predict, but has high consequences. But we'll talk about that later. Let's just stay more now, just with some simple numbers. Okay, so we need, so the forecast, the, the demand forecast comes from our data, what we have on the books, how many rooms are being sold, how quickly they're being sold, how much time is there left to sell the rooms, and we're tracking that <coughs> compared to last year. So we're looking at the pickup, we're looking how quickly the rooms are selling and comparing that to uh, history. Clearly though, if, if the data that the system or that we're looking at is not good, it's not of good quality, then our forecast isn't going to be of good quality either. So there are in the front desk in reservations, there are things they do which can seriously damage the, the, the accuracy of the forecast, okay? But also events, unusual events, can also damage forecast accuracy. There are different things. 
Um, so we're going to talk about how can we manage that data, how can we notice maybe that we're using the wrong data to do our forecast, and, and how do we fix that problem. But certainly the information that's input during the reservation process is important. Particularly important for forecasting is the date the booking was made. Right? So if, for example, nobody works in reservations for a week, and the bookings come in, but nobody via email and fax, and they're not actually getting put into the system, um, and we wait and we do it, oh, well, I'll do it in a week or whatever, it kind of means that we've got wrong in the date, that we don't know the date, the proper date of the reservation is being made, and that's kind of useful to know. But also, we want to have good statistics. Um, it's great to show the general manager we had 100% occupancy last night, so well, we're at 98% now, so if we just check in two of those no-shows, then we're going to get to 100%, and that's great. However, not really great for our no-show, our data, and the data we're collecting on our no-shows, and we're checking in the no-shows in order to have nice statistics at the end. So we've got to really be true to what's really happening in the hotel, so that we can have then good data, and good data leads then to more accurate forecasts, demand forecasts, remember. Okay? So forecasting is the base for you know, that optimization. So if we get that right, then the optimization will just follow naturally. Um, so we can increase revenue by 1% to 2%, which then drops right down to profit, which means we increase the profit of 1% to 2% as well. We want to forecast by arrivals. We're not forecasting, oh, we're going to have 80% occupancy next week. No. <coughs> we're, we're forecasting how many people we expect to be arriving on those days. And we're doing an unconstrained forecast, so we're not saying how many of our rooms do we think we can sell? No. Forget about rooms. Let's just think about if we had an unlimited number of rooms available, how many could we sell? Right? If there was no limit to rooms. Because if we're just looking at how many, when can we sell all, our, all of our rooms, we can't differentiate between the nights of high demand, very high demand, super high demand and extreme demand, because all we see is that 100% all the time that we're expecting, right? And, and the high, very high, super high and extremely high leads to a huge amount of different revenue opportunities. So we really need to know what's the total demand. When we know that, we can then cherry pick the best booking. And remember, it's about improving the revenue on the nights just before and after the <coughs> high demand period. But of course, if we don't have a revenue management system, then we can just do a simple forecast. We can't do something that's really detailed or a long period in the future because it's simply not possible for us to do that manually. Um, so we do what we can, um, but if we, have, if we have an automated system, then we should be able to do something a little better. As long as the past is similar to the future, right? then the system is great. The system is really good, but if the future is different from the past, then clearly the system doesn't really know what's happening and can only kind of be a little bit reactive as the bookings are coming in. So we've got different scenarios. But the good news is it has been proven, it is a definite, that a system on its own is not as good as system and person revenue manager together. In the same way, a revenue manager on their own without system is, again, not as good as system and revenue manager. This is the ideal scenario, two things working together, because the system can never know exactly the future, and people, we see a lot more than the system that we see. The system can only analyze what happened in the past and what's currently happening based on the data that's being in the we have that ability to see the future. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to be building some booking curves using data from the past. We're going to then use those booking curves to do pick up forecasting. And then we're going to validate, we're going to do a forecast validation, and we're going to use mean absolute percentage error to see, okay, how accurate was our forecast, and where it wasn't accurate, what could we do in order to make the forecast more accurate. Remember, it's the base of everything. And then we'll have a look at how we might use the same approach for our group and for our so, here we see our beautiful looking curve. Okay, and this is going to be the basis for everything. So, let's say, first scenario, and let's see what page 
ask for a Tuesday, that's in seven days' time, we're using that historical data, and we have, so what we need to do is to have a look at how many reservations we currently have, so we look how many reservations we have, 195, what I'd like you to do is tell me what is the forecast. Do you missing a piece of information? What missing, what's the missing piece of information? The pickup. Okay. So I've given you seven days before arrival. These are the reservations on average we have on the book. So what is the pickup? So the pickup here, we're looking at, we end up with 298 minus 180. So the pickup in the last seven days before arrival is 118, is it? I can't do maths when I'm 30 people are looking at me. We currently have 195 reservations on the book, so we're going to add that. Therefore, our forecast is 313, is it right? Yes. Okay. Let me start. First of all, is that clear? Yeah. Okay. It's a little bit weird, a little bit strange, so for some of you it might not be clear, so we're going to do some more exercises now. This is kind of the main idea. <coughs> but what I want to say to you is the following. On average, we sell 298. Our forecast says 313. Is that possible that that's going to happen? Is that a good forecast? Or is it a completely bizarre situation that we can just kind of say, well, no, that's completely bizarre? Well, basically we know that we're never going to exactly know what's going to happen. Okay, it's in seven days' time. We have a few more reservations on the books than we normally have. But what we have to do is decide the tolerance. We have to decide, well, there's going to be a certain margin that we expect is going to be different. Right? We can see that we have a few more reservations on the books. Is this going to radically change the, the type of demand that's coming in? And so generally, we have to decide, well, 10% more or less, we expect there to be. So if we were to say, in this case, 10% more or less, we could say, well, 19, 18 more, 18 less. We kind of are within what might be considered as normal. And then when it goes past that, we might say, well, hmm, maybe this future day is different from that day or those days. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do it from scratch. We're going to take five, five bits of data from the past. We're going to average that data out. We're going to create a booking curve. And then from that booking curve, we're going to calculate pickup, and then we're going to use that pickup to forecast for the future. Okay? So a very simple exercise. Which we so the first thing I would like you to do is to calculate average business on the books. Where are we at this time? Did you send to us? Um, it was on a memory stick. Who has the memory stick? So where then? Did you have the memory stick? Yeah. And so, but I can send it to you by email if you wish me to. You can also, Sandra's going to send it to you. So the memory stick is here if anybody wants to put that on. The computer works with Excel, but if not, it's very straightforward to just do it on paper as well. <coughs> just let me give you what you need to be doing right now. First thing.
28 days before arrival, okay, what was the average number of reservations on the books? We're simply going to add this, divide by five. Okay, or use an average function for doing it in Excel. So 21 days before arrival, how many bookings did they have on average? 14 days before arrival, what was the average? Just calculate that for a minute. We add 120 plus 140 plus 130 plus 120 plus 120 divided by 5. We know that on average they ended up with 126. Okay? So therefore, with those two that information, we can calculate the pickup. Alright, so we know that if they had 36 bookings 28 days before arrival, they end up with 126. The pickup must be 90. Okay, so it's the difference, so it's this number minus this number that tells us the pickup. Okay. okay, so 21 days before arrival, we have on average 48 reservations on the books. So the pickup in the remaining 21 days is going to be 126 minus 48. Gives us our pickup. Please calculate now all the other two. Please do the calculation. 
Association. So we have a day, 21 days. We actually have 54 reservations on hand. What's the forecast, please? Calculate. We have a day in 21 days. We have already 52 reservations on hand. What's the forecast? Please calculate. So what do we think about this forecast here? This 113. Is it any good? Can we rely on it? How accurate is it going to be? As a revenue manager, you need to look at that number and know if it's going to be any good. Is it nonsense? Is it going to be, can I rely on this? Should I base my decisions on this or maybe not? How do we decide? Is that any good? Well, we said that we're going to have this tolerance. We? we say up to about 10% more or less than what's normal. We kind of say, okay, that's within normal. We know it's never going to be exactly the same as it was in the past. So 10% plus or minus is kind of normal. Things are happening normally. Once we go outside that acceptable tolerance, which could be 15%, it depends on you to decide what's normal and what isn't. So let's say for our example purposes, 10% plus or minus is kind of normal. So if we look at this, 10% plus or minus, that's normal from the past. So that's 12.6 plus or 12.6 minus. That's within our normal range. Okay, so if I do a little bit of a calculation here, and I say, okay, let me have a look at the difference, the percentage difference between my forecast and what's normal. Okay, I can take, I can take this number, I can take this number minus this number to calculate the difference, divide it by what's normal, and I see where I stand. Okay, if I divide by this. I can see that I'm kind of just on the border of what I tolerate as being normal. Okay? So here we're okay. Now if we do the, if we look at the other days, this is what you should have calculated as your forecast, and if we do that same evaluation, I can kind of see, well, here I'm normal as well, but here things start to get a bit weird. Here I go outside that 10%. So, Basically, what we need to understand from this is at what point the revenue management system, if everything is normal, we just let the revenue management system make the recommendations and we then put update the, our property management system with those recommendations or we have an database where it's all done automatically. Right? Revenue manager just needs to be concerned about when we have a day that's not normal. Because normal revenue management systems can manage very, very well. So we have to identify days which we call exception days. Okay, and we can see that this day, this day is officially, if 10% is our tolerance, this day is officially an exception. Okay? So here we would put an if function, we could do an if function there, where automatically here would appear normal, normal, ex exception. So here we would say if, if this is more than 10%, please write normal. If not, please say exception. Okay, so we automatically have that done and then put the exception in red and then when we do our forecast we can see all of the exceptions that jump out and we know that we have to manage those as a human because the system doesn't really know what to do when the day is normal. All right? So here clearly we would have to know do we open a rate category or close a rate category. So, of course you all, how many different rates do you have? <laughs> how many different rates do you have? 500? 5,000? Remember, the more prices you have, the more you're going to capture opportunity. The fewer prices you have, the more money you're leaving on the table. Okay? So, it doesn't matter how, if you have four prices, 40 prices, or 400 prices, or 4,000 prices, you're going to organize them into rate categories, right? Or buckets. So we've got our rate categories. Or buckets. Okay, so we've got our high bucket, highest. We might have our medium bucket, where we may have 4, 40, 44, 4,000, it doesn't matter. And here we'll have our low, and maybe here we'll have our promotional rates. <coughs> okay. For an example, in this bucket here, we might have everything that is 400 or more. Here we might have everything that's between 300.
300 and 399. All of those rates are in this bucket. Here we might have everything from 200 to 299. And here we might have everything that is less than 200. And you can see that it's 200 or less. Or 199 or less. Okay? So all our rates are organized into buckets. So here we're simply going to say, if normally, if normally, if normally these two buckets are closed and these two are open, we would just continue with that strategy. But if we see we have an exception day, we can see here demand is, and here actually it's incorrect because it should say plus 13%. Um, it doesn't really matter. What we're interested in is the absolute. And actually here what I should do is just put ABS so we don't actually see the plus or minus. Okay, it's up to us to kind of say, well I can see that I'm forecasting that demand will be a lot stronger than normal. Therefore, my strategy will be here to close this great category for the moment and then see how we go from there and just have my that high and my bar my highest rates so open. This is very simple and we're going to move forward now and say okay what would be what would be the next step? But the important thing is that you fully understand how the forecast pick up forecasting works. And in order to be sure that you fully understand that, I want you to do this exercise now and show me that you have understood pick up forecasting. If you don't know the <coughs> then you're going to call me up. So if you haven't understood that bit, it's very going to be very complicated the next part. <laughs> Do the test now. Tell me the forecast, please. Today is Wednesday. Thursday is tomorrow. This Wednesday is in seven days' time. Okay, so based on the fact today is Wednesday, what is the forecast for the next seven days? Here you already have the average booking curves have been calculated for you. Alright? So if we create, if I do a little chart from this data. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are similar, Friday, Saturday are similar, Sunday is different. Okay, so the average curves have already been created. You don't need to do that. What you need to do is calculate the pickup, add the pickup to business on the books. The first column we need to create is days before arrival. How many days are there left to pick up reservations? So, today's Wednesday, so Thursday is two days. Friday is two days, etc. What is the third column? Pick up. So for next Wednesday, we still have seven more days to get bookings. So how many bookings can we expect? Well, we're going to look at Monday, and we're going to say, well, on average, we end up with 160. And five days before arrival, we have 81. So the pickup is expect to get in the five days is 160 minus 81. So we're always using this minus one number as our reference. <coughs> and because Monday is in five days, we're looking at the difference between what we had on the books on average five days before arrival and on average what actually happened in order to calculate our pickup. So it's the difference between the red number 
Thursday is in one day's time. Friday is in two days' time. Saturday is in three days' time. So we're looking at Saturday, and we're looking at the three columns. Based on how many more days we have to get bookings. Now, I, need to do, I can do this here by doing each one manually. So I can say Thursday is going to be 143 minus 173. Friday is going to be 110 minus 84. Saturday is going to be 115 minus 75. And therefore our forecast is going to be business Okay, so when in your in your own mind, if you're talking about pickup, it should be very clear for you where it's coming from. Now, if I want to do it automatically, so if I do it manually, so it's Sunday, there's still four days to go until Sunday, so I look on the Sunday line, I normally end up with 94. And I normally have four, when there's four days before arrival, 30, I can see my people. On Monday, I end up with 160. There's five more days to go. But minus what I have on the books on average on Monday. <coughs> Perché lei risulta una 65, vedi? Invece lì è 74. E invece lei c'ha 74 frani e 74 saldi. Comunque il calcolo è quello, quanto fa la situazione? Vai, 
wide demand of their meat. <coughs> That's how it is sometimes. And again, we should have detected this very early. We've done something very early on in order to demand. If we tried, we didn't. Never mind, it's like that. Here we can see we have some very good, some very similar days. These two days are not normal. These are our exceptional days. So the important thing here is that you understand how we do pick up forecasting. And go back and look tonight again at the exercise. If it's at the end of the day, and sometimes me, I can't even do one plus one when it's the end of the day. So you might need to look at this with fresh eyes tomorrow morning. Um, you understand the difference between normal, normal situation and an exception day. And you realize that when it's normal, the system can take care of that. When it's a little bit unusual, we need to maybe have that manual intervention. We shouldn't be intervening manually with our rate strategy when things are normal. Okay, so we've got normal and exception, which, which then leads me to start talking about black swans and coconuts and all of those things that we're going to start to talk about now. Okay. May I ask a question, please? Of course. Uh, should we divide the average booking curves by season? Okay, and I want to thank you very much for that question. That's an excellent question. So, without, without hopefully seeing too So, we need to, we need to understand our demand patterns, and we need to think about, so when we're forecasting, we're using data from the past that is similar to those days that we're forecasting for. So clearly, we need to um, ensure that the d data that we're using is representative. So we're using data for low season, or low demand days to forecast for low demand days in the future. But we're also splitting that by day of the week. We're not looking at dates, unless we have dates. So, so for example, if we wanted to forecast for the 25th of December, we know it's a special event, right? So we're going to be taking 25ths of December's from the past, let's say four, or five, if they're similar, if the situation hasn't changed in order to forecast for the 25th of December this year. Okay? That's as long as things have stayed similar, <coughs> patterns have stayed similar. But for example, for March, as long as Easter does, does not fall in March, we can take sometimes February. Sometimes February and March are very similar, so we can use February to forecast for March, or we can use February and March from last year to forecast for February and March this year. Um, so yes, we need to understand whether there's similar patterns. But what we're not going to do is we're not going to say, okay, the 12th of February, I'm going to take the 12th of February last year to forecast for the 12th of February this year because the 12th of February last year was on a different day. All right? So we need to be looking at Monday data to forecast for Monday in the future, except if we have a special event like Christmas or Valentine's Day or a bank holiday. So clearly, for bank holidays, we're going to be taking bank holidays from the past to forecast for bank holidays in the future. So yes, absolutely, we have to split our data up, and we have to tell our revenue management system what are the special events, what are the events that are going to happen every year, what are the events that are one-off. You know, it's going to happen. The Olympics happened in London. So revenue management system don't even think that the demand patterns from the summer last year are going to reflect the summer this year because that was the Olympics and that's not going to happen again, <coughs> ever, maybe, or maybe in 40 years, okay? So we've got to, a system will do that by itself. It will look for similar patterns and it will put the data together where the similar patterns are. But for special events, we need to, to do that ourselves. So sometimes we're comparing Mondays to Mondays, sometimes we're comparing dates if it's a special event, and sometimes we simply need to say, that data I can take out and not use it because that's something that's not going to happen again, like the ash cloud scenario. The ash cloud happened or we have a strike, Alitalia goes on strike, well, maybe you know, that's going to affect demand and we need to manage that manually and remember not to use that data to talk us in the future. Now I'm going to show you something lovely that you as non-revenue managers, I know there are some revenue managers here, but non-revenue managers do you really need to do Yes. You don't need to do this. What's lovely for you is what I'm going to show you now, which is the booking curve percentage. And this is where, for me, it gives me bumps. In fact, look, I've got goosebumps on my arms when I think about the booking curve percentage. 
um, which is kind of sad, but it's, I think it's very exciting. Okay, so let's go back to the booking matrix. Now, based on this data, we can say that this is, this is the magic, okay? This is the magic. We can say that this is 100% of what we can expect to get on this type of day, right? This 126 <coughs> is 100% of what we can expect to get. Would you agree? Yeah? On this type of day, on average, this is 100% of what we can expect to get. Yeah? So this is 100%, all right? So therefore, this number represents, if we do 90, Divided by the 100% of what we can expect to get, this number represents 71.5%, more or less. Okay? This represents, so we can say that seven days before arrival, for the GMs in here, for the sales and marketing people in here, we can say that we can expect to already have sold 70% of our, or we can already expect to have 70% of the demand has already booked. So we can expect 30% more to book in order to achieve our normal 100% percentage that we can expect. Sounds a bit complicated, doesn't it? Well, what percentage is this? Let's have a look here. If we can say that normally we have 62 reservations on the books and we end up selling 126, what does that represent in terms of a percentage? Huh? If we say, okay, 62 divided by 126, that's about 50%. Now we're just doing approximate in our head calculations here. Okay? So, <coughs> in fact, I'm going to do this, I'm going to round this because, you know, this is just kind of in my head. I need to kind of have an idea of what the situation is. So I, I can go down as a general manager. Remember, it's about the right, asking the right questions. So I can go down and I can say to reservations, how many bookings, how many reservations do we have for... Tuesday in 14 days, and reservations might say, oh, we've already got 70 bookings. Okay, thanks for that. So what's our forecast? If we know that 70 represents, for a Tuesday in 14 days, represents about 50% of what we can expect to get, we can straight away do a forecast in our heads, can't we? Yeah, 70, 50%, so probably we, we can expect about 140 arrivals. Would you say? you say or not? Yeah? Okay, so it's really nice because once we understand the normal way that bookings come in, and we've got those percentages in our heads, then we can kind of just ask a few questions, how, what's on the books, and we can very quickly do a forecast in our heads. So for example, <coughs> original Premier Inn, Premier Inn in the UK, I don't know if it's will shock you, maybe it won't, Premier Inn, Premier Inn has 600 hotels, and they own all of their hotels. It's a number of budget hotel brand in the UK. It's the largest hotel chain in the UK, and they have the biggest revenue management team in the UK, and they have a centralized revenue management function. Um, so, very interesting in terms of their approach. They have 600 hotels in the UK. Can you guess how many revenue managers they have? 600 hotels in the UK. One. <laughs> that would be a tough job. Uh, uh, they have six. Between one and twenty, on, if I did an average, they have six revenue managers for six hundred hotels. Okay, so one revenue manager has to take care of a hundred hotels on average. So clearly, you know, uh, clearly they need some help from their systems. They call their revenue manager system the me. Um, me and created a whole. Animation around, but anyway. So, for someone who's a regional revenue manager who has a ton of hotels, especially if they're budget hotels, I know it's not your um, area, but I just want to give you this example because it's rather nice. So, I don't know if you know, but in budget hotel chains, the break-even point is 90% occupancy. Okay, so the profit comes at anything I sell more than my 90%, so I need 90% just to break even, and then everything above that is profit, minus variable cost. Okay, cool. So, so in a particular region, the revenue manager knows that 30 days before arrival, I'm sorry, 
sorry, my days before arrival. My reservations on hand for 30 days before arrival. <coughs> Manager is asking all of the hotels what percentage of um, rooms have been booked. So if 30% of the rooms have been booked <coughs> 30 days before arrival, in a particular reason, region, the revenue manager knows 30% already on the books 30 days before arrival means sell out. Okay, so that's their booking curve. So basically they know if they go and ask Okay, tell me how many you have reservations, what percentage of the rooms have been booked 30 days before arrival. They know if it's 25%, for example, if the hotel is down here, they know that sellout is not going to be achieved. And in the same way, if they know that 35% of the book rooms have been booked, they know that there's going to be more demand than supply. Okay? So it's a very nice, it's a very nice calculation for them, so they know already 30 days before arrival exactly what the situation is, which gives them, okay, some of the rooms have already been booked, but it leaves them the possibility to maximize revenue on the remaining 70% of the rooms, for example, or 65%, depending on how many rooms have been booked, that's what people are writing. Okay, so what we need to do now is, okay, what we need to do with this information now is we need to develop hypothetical scenarios. We need to know as managers what percentage of reservations do we need to have on the books in order for us to be in a sellout scenario. What percentage of res reservations do we need to have on the books in order that, that tells us we're not going to sell out? And what percentage of reservations do we need to have on the books in order for us to understand that we have a really strong demand. Now here, this is already too late. What we would like to do as managers is we would like to know when the curve is, it's kind of going off the chart here, when we've only sold maybe one room or two rooms, we would like to know, okay, what's the situation? <coughs> So in this video you saw how pickup forecasting works, you saw how we can create a booking curve and then from that booking curve we can calculate the average pickup, then we can add or apply the average pickup to our actual reservations on the books in order to determine the forecast. Thank you very much for following this free video and I hope you found it interesting and useful. And please do go to fluful.com and sign up for some of our other free online courses. The number of courses will be increasing in the future, so do go back from time to time to see what else is available. Thank you.